What if the biggest problem in robotics isn't intelligence, but anatomy? While everyone's focused on AI, one company is solving the body. They're building androids with artificial muscles and hydraulic hearts. No motors, just pure bio-inspired design. But that's just the start. Today we're also covering why Boston Dynamics' most boring video is actually their most groundbreaking, a humanoid built in just seven months. And why a viral AI trend got a little too personal for some people. It's a big episode. Let's get into it. Let's kick things off with Clone Robotics. I got really interested in their approach after hearing from their CEO, Danush Radhakrishnan. See, he grew up fascinated by companies like Boston Dynamics and always expected androids to be a real thing by now. His big vision is pretty straightforward, but incredibly ambitious. To build a functional human clone. Not a robot that does one job, but an android that can handle the endless variety of tasks a person can. They started with the hand, because it's our most complex tool. Early on, they tried tendon-driven designs with motors, but it was too difficult. So they pivoted to developing their own artificial muscles. These are polymer-based actuators that actually mimic human muscle. They have tendon-like systems that provide strength, speed, and fine control. Dahanush said with this tech, they can basically use anatomy textbooks as their blueprint. But muscles need power, right? Instead of external batteries or bulky motors, they built what they call a hydraulic heart. It's a compact pump system right inside the torso that circulates fluid to make the muscles contract and relax. The goal is a fully untethered android that walks and moves with everything self-contained. When it comes to use cases, Danush imagines these clones as companions. Think making breakfast, picking out clothes, or assisting at work, something that fits into daily life like a helper. Battery life is about an hour right now under full activity, but with normal intermittent use, they're aiming for several hours. They'll learn first by watching us, then later by combining that with language commands. Oh, and they're avoiding super realistic faces on purpose to skip the uncanny valley. All their focus is on functional ability, with untethered walking as the next big milestone. Now, let's talk about Boston Dynamics. If you followed them for a while, you're used to Atlas doing backflips and parkour. Their newest video is completely different. It looks almost boring. Atlas is just moving parts around a workshop. But that's why it's such a big deal. Those flashy videos were pre-programmed routines. This new demo is powered by something called a Large Behavior Model, or LBM, which they developed with Toyota Research Institute. This LBM is a generalist AI policy that lets Atlas perform multi-step tasks from a simple language command. It's not scripted move by move. If the robot drops something or something goes wrong, it can adapt and recover on its own because it learned how to handle problems from training data. They use a data flywheel. Human operators demonstrate tasks in VR. The data trains the model in simulation, and then it runs on the real robot. This loop means they can improve really quickly. Interestingly, the robot often performs the tasks almost twice as fast as the human demonstrator. Technically, it's a 450 million parameter diffusion model, similar to what's used in AI image generation, that takes in camera data, body position, and language prompts, then outputs actions 30 times per second. This is part of a bigger shift in robotics. Instead of training one robot for one task, projects like OpenX Embodiment are showing that using data from many different robots makes models way more capable. Atlas's model was actually trained on mixed data, including from other robots, which is why it's so flexible. So yeah, it looks less exciting, but it's actually way more useful for real-world applications. Shifting gears, a new company just entered the humanoid robotics scene, and their development story is honestly mind-blowing. They managed to go from a pure idea to a fully functioning walking humanoid robot in only seven months. Let that sink in. They call it the Humanoid Alpha Project, and it was built by a team of over 175 people who came together from all sorts of top-tier backgrounds. The robot itself, designated HMND-01, is built for real-world use. It stands at 5 foot 9, weighs 154 pounds, and can walk at about 3.3 miles per hour. But what's really impressive is its strength. It can carry up to 165 pounds. 
and it does all this on a battery that lasts for four hours, which is pretty substantial for a platform this complex. Of course, building something this advanced that fast came with huge challenges. The CEO openly talked about how nothing went smoothly at first. Their custom arms showed up late, critical computers crashed at the worst times, and the sheer power draw of all their equipment actually kept overloading the building's circuits and popping breakers. He said there were moments where hitting their deadline felt genuinely impossible. But what made it work was the team's sheer determination. People were working harder than they ever had in their careers, refusing to quit. They didn't just meet their minimum goals, they blew right past them. The final robot exceeded expectations in pretty much every way. What you're seeing now is just a teaser. The full reveal is scheduled for September 18th. This might be one of the most impressive tech execution stories we've seen in robotics. Now, shifting from robotics to biotechnology, there are some massive claims coming from Demise Hasabis, the CEO of Google DeepMind. He recently stated that AI is going to radically compress the timeline for discovering new drugs, from something that usually takes many years down to just months, or maybe even less. This isn't just theoretical. His company, Isomorphic Labs, which was spun out to commercialize DeepMind's AlphaFold technology, has already signed major deals with pharmaceutical giants Eli Lilly and Novartis. They're focusing on tough targets like cancer and immune disorders. The current drug discovery process is notoriously slow and has a huge failure rate, but Hasabis believes the next generation of AI can change that. You might remember AlphaFold. It's the AI that accurately predicts protein structures, which won Hasabis a Nobel Prize. Now, they're working on a much more advanced model that goes beyond just proteins to understand the full complexity of biological interactions. That said, it's important to note that no AI-designed drug has successfully completed a clinical trial yet. Isomorphic Labs hasn't started theirs, though they originally aimed for the end of this year. Still, researchers there are confident. The director of medicinal drug design at Isomorphic even suggested that AI could eventually turn certain cancers into manageable chronic conditions rather than fatal diseases. This isn't simply about speeding up research, it's about tackling biological problems that have been out of reach until now. Now, let's turn to a significant trend that's circulating, known as the Gemini Nano Banana AI Suri trend. Basically, you upload a photo to Google's Gemini app, and it uses its AI model, Nano Banana, to generate an image of you wearing a beautiful sari against a vintage backdrop. It became super popular for creating these really elegant artistic portraits, but one user's experience turned the trend from fun to pretty unsettling. She uploaded a photo to try it out, and when she got her AI-generated image back, she noticed something specific. The picture featured a mole on her left arm. The creepy part? That mole wasn't visible in the original photo she provided to the app. She posted a video about it, asking how Gemini could possibly know about a physical detail that wasn't in the source image. The answer, which a lot of people pointed out in the comments, is that these AI models don't operate in a vacuum. When you use a tool like Gemini, which is built by Google, it doesn't just use the single image you upload. It's likely drawing from a much broader digital footprint associated with your identity. If you have other photos online, on social media, in Google Photos, or elsewhere, that the AI has been trained on or can access, it uses that aggregated data to create a more accurate or detailed image of you. So it wasn't guessing, it was referencing. It's a powerful example of how these models work by stitching together information from various sources but it also serves as a real reminder that our online data has a longer lifespan and wider use than we often think about when we click upload. So from companies building androids with artificial muscles, to robots that finally learn from observation, to AI that's tackling disease and our fashion choices, it's an incredible time to be watching this space. The line between science fiction and reality is blurring faster than ever. What do you think is the most impactful development here? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this deep dive, hit that like button and subscribe for more tech insights. Until next time, stay curious.